in Genesis 1-1, look there just at one verse, and we'll go to John 1-1 in the gospel. Now this is a, a, a study that will help you, I think it'll help you, most of you probably know about the Trinity, the deity, the, the fact that God is three personalities, one God Three personalities, blessed Trinity. Now, the word Trinity, you do not, um, you do not find the word Trinity in the Bible, but you find the Trinity in the Bible: Father, Son, Holy Spirit. At the baptism of Jesus, the, you'll see all three at at one time. Now, in Genesis chapter one, you'll see it says now. Young people need to grab a hold of this. Younger folks, they don't seem to grab it. I didn't grab it when I was first saved. I had to really concentrate on it. I had to study it. People had to teach me. I had to listen. It says here, in the beginning, what? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Turn to chapter 1 of John's Gospel. <clears throat> now we know that God created the heavens and the earth. That's a pretty good job, don't you imagine? He created all that we view at nighttime is a beautiful, majestic, uh, perfect example of the creations of God, the stars, the, the moon, the Milky Way. The galaxies. Woo! What a God. He created all that. But then on the other hand, you can go to certain places in the United States of America, get on some high hill and see the creation of God also. What a beautiful, beautiful, majestic view. Love to see it. I once stood and looked for about an hour and stared at the rolling hills of South Dakota. Nothing more beautiful. I kept seeing those ponies, those Sioux Indian ponies coming over those hills back in the day. I can imagine, woo, what a beautiful sight that must have seen. Now, Custer probably didn't like the idea much, but he, but he was over there in Wyoming, I think. But anyway, the thing of it is, is that it's just as beautiful there as it is. Here. Have you ever just looked down into the uh, Grand Canyon? Isn't that a beautiful sight? It's a beautiful sight to be coming out of the desert into San Diego. Whoa, the breeze that comes off the ocean if you've been through that desert. Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful sight to see. Behold, I traveled to see my son often when he was Fort Drum in the Army, and I love to see the beautiful views of Pennsylvania, the beautiful hills and valleys of Pennsylvania. I thought it was beautiful. I love those sights. In the beginning, God created. Look at verse number one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Now notice the next part. And the Word was God. Amen? He was God. Now, the, what part of the Trinity or the, the, uh, of God was made flesh? There's Father, there's Son, there's Holy Ghost. All three God, all equal. All co-equal. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One God, three personalities. Blessed Trinity, that song we just sang. Holy, 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 holy. Lord God Almighty, one God, three person, blessed Trinity. Now, Jesus... 
was the Word. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Look at verse 14, for the evidence. What's it say? And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Who was the only begotten Son? Jesus, He was the Word. And the Word was made flesh. What part of the Trinity was made flesh? The second part. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Now, Colossians in your Bible, please. Verse number 1. Colossians chapter 1, look at verse 16. Talking about Jesus, who is the image of the invisible God. Verse 15, the firstborn of every creature. Okay, look at verse 16. For by him were all things, what? Created and are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So we know that Jesus, who will you also be your judge, created it all and shared it with us. But then you also need to remember that all things that are his are also ours. That's the real, that's a good one, isn't it? Everything he has belongs to us because we are joint heirs with Christ. That's what we are. Sons of God. <laughs> Anyhow, don't get in a debate with Mr. McGee, honey. <laughs> Um, in John's Gospel, chapter 1, it talks about Jesus, and it talks about a lot of phenomenal, personal, great, mighty things. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Who? The word. And without him was not anything made that wasn't made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Now we want to go from Jesus to his forerunner, his cousin, if you please. The very person that Jesus said, born of woman, there was not a greater man that ever lived than John the Baptist. He loved John. John was a miracle child, by the way. His mother was an age when he was, when he was conceived. And he was the one that I always use to confront a person who believes in abortion. The Bible says that when Mary told Elizabeth that she was with child of the Holy Spirit, John the Baptist, six months in his mother's womb, leaped. And the Bible says, or the Holy Spirit, which wrote the Bible, said this, and the baby But no nation that ever killed babies got away with it. Nor will we get away with killing babies. It's the most gruesome, hideous, meanest, bold, nasty thing that ever happened is for a mother to kill her own baby. Can't describe how I feel. I remember when I first saw my first 
child, how delighted and excited I was. And the anticipation. I had nine months of anticipation. <laughs> waiting and waiting and waiting and wondering and wondering and waiting. Did not know in those days what it was, boy or female. I waited with anticipation. The wife wanted a girl, I wanted a boy. Waited and waited and waited and finally the little baby was born and I held him in my arms and said, I got my boy. Then I got my second boy. Then my third boy. And then my fourth boy. And mama did not get her boy. What's it like to have one? But regardless of boy or I love children today. I love these children that are in this church. I love them. I give them quarters. I go broke. I need to borrow some money from Mr. McGewa. God says, I want you to do Mr. McGewa. When you loan it to me, give it to me in quarters. Because they come up to me every day. They can't wait to see the preacher. And I just hand them a quarter. And they love it. And they love it. And of course, it used to be a dime. And of course, it used to be a nickel. Of course, inflation. But you see, Jesus, John, verse 6 says, there was a man sent from God whose name was who? John. I like John. I used to tell the people, you know, what I'm about to say is not true. But I like to say it. I believe if you're baptized, Baptized by Catholic, you're Catholic. And if you're baptized by a Baptist, you're a Baptist. Jesus was not baptized by a Methodist, a Presbyterian, or a Catholic. Jesus was baptized by John the what? Baptist. Amen. Now, if God, the Almighty, sent his son to be baptized by a Baptist, if God Now, verse 7, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, and all men through him might believe. Here's what John the Baptist was. He was witness of Jesus Christ. He was a forerunner of Christ. He was the one, the sounding symbol of the coming of Christ in his first advent. He came, and John the Baptist echoed it out. Behold, the Lamb of God. Now, verse 7, verse 8 says this. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. So who was the light? Who was the light of the world? Jesus Christ. He was the light. See these lights here? When we get to heaven, we won't need them. Because Jesus is the light. The light of the world. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was what? Made by him. When he went to the cross, he was put on a cross that was made by him. He made it all. He made it all 
for him and for you. Verse 10, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. The world knew him not. Now the world had plenty of warning he was coming. But they knew him not. They didn't want him. Some did, most didn't. He came into the world, they knew him not. You see, the Jews was looking for a different kind of a savior. One that would be born out of a powerful guy, king. They refused to accept a babe born in a man to become king of the Jews. They refused to accept him to this day. what's going to happen. The Antichrist is going to come on the scene after the rapture takes place. And the Jews are going to look to him and say, this is the one in which we look. And they're going to accept him. Three and a half months into that tribulation period, they're going to realize he's not him. And the one that was him, they put on the cross. Right. <laughs> Some of the greatest people that ever lived came from poor beginnings. Some of the greatest inventors, leaders of our land. Abraham Lincoln was a poor man. A lot of poor people. You don't have to be rich, like the world seems to think, in order to be a supreme leader. You can come from just the normal, average American home and become very successful. I told that to somebody yesterday. I said, don't let anybody kid you. You can be what you want to be because you and God make up a majority. The Lord said, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. As long as God's with me, how can you be in a deal like that? If he's for you, who can be against you? Verse number 11 says, he came into his own and his own received him not. We'd rather have a murderer loose, crucify him. We'd rather have a murderer run the street, crucify him. By the way, that's what they're saying today. This very day, they're saying the same thing. Now, the good news is this. He came in his own, and he re received him not. But it, those who received him became, had the power to become the sons of God. So he went to the Gentiles. That's what you are. We're fortunate today that he loves us equally. Aren't you glad? That makes you excited. Yes. He loves even me. I love that song, don't you? Amen. Even me, he loves. And I like the, by the way, when Billy Graham died, did you know that during his multitude of years of being an evangelist, he used one invitation song, Just As I Am Without One Plea. The only song he ever used for an invitation, he said, ask him why, why don't you use others? He said, because he took me just as I am. And he'll take you the same way. He came into his own. His own received him not. But to them who received him, he gave you power to become the sons of God. Now think about that. You receive Christ to become a son of God. You say, well, it's not a big deal now. Well, it will be a big deal. And it is a big deal now. Yes, it may be a bad deal later, but it's a big deal now that you are a child of God. Amen. Could be a child of the devil. By the way, there is no exodus in hell. Right. Now there's exodus in the church, but no exodus in hell. Once you're in there, you can't get out of there. <clears throat> he came into his own, and his own received him not. Verse 12. But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe 
on his name. When I was in Israel, our guide was not a Christian. She was a woman. She was a Jew. But was not a Christian, was she, Bob? She knew I was a preacher. She knew she was probably going to have to contend with me. Okay? Which you understand, I was just a tourist. I wasn't looking for any argumentation. I wasn't looking for anybody to... But she looked at me one day and looked at me and said to me, You know, Pastor, there is really no evidence, proven evidence, that there was such a person as Jesus Christ. Is that what she said? She said, No, she said there was no proof. I said, Proof? You got to have proof, do you? She said, Yeah, I have to have proof. I said, You believe? And that the Jews came through on dry ground. She said, I believe that. I said, can you prove it? I said, do you believe what you just showed us about Sodom and Gomorrah that was once destroyed? Did you believe that? Yes. I said, can you prove it? You want proof, but you can't please God without faith. Faith without faith is impossible to believe God. I believe the Bible, Old and New Testament, equally, I believe it by faith. Yeah. You believe only the Old Testament because he came to his own and you received him not. He came into the Gentiles and I received him. I did it all by faith, for without faith it is impossible to please God. You have to have faith. Amen. Faith. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You have to have faith. Without it, you can't please God. But he as many as receive him. Now, I received him. Now, notice, it said, but as many as receive him. One day, I took time out in my busy life as a 17-year-old teenager to repent of my sin and receive him. He has since been my best friend, the lover of my soul. He's also been my Savior, my God, and my Creator. He's been everything. He has helped me. I talk to him. I talk to him like I talk to anybody else. I tell him I love him like I tell my wife. I tell him I love him like I tell my... Tell those I love, my children. I tell them, well, you always should tell the people you love, you love them. In fact, it's wrong if you don't tell them you love them. And you can't get too macho to tell anybody you love them. I tell men in this church I love them. Right. You have to love. Without love, you haven't got much of a life, in my opinion. See, I love God. I realize that God is a tough God sometimes. You agree? Ask Sodom and Gomorrah how tough God is. They mocked God until the lightning came down and judgment came down. You see, they mocked God for 120 years as Noah preached to them until, oops, He said it was going to. They mocked him. They laughed at him. Uh, too late. And when they got into the ark, God shut the door. One of these days, he's going to shut the door on America. Amen. Don't you hate that? Yes. Here's why I hate it. My children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren. Because I'm praying that the rat You know what? A multitude of millions of people wanted that, including the Apostle Paul. But you know what? It didn't happen in their time. It may not happen in ours. I think Jesus is coming soon. But I don't know. I think you, America at least will be judged. And I think we're being judged right now. 
Uh, let me say this. One of the most hideous things that you can do, but there's two hideous things going on in America that you cannot get away from. One is killing God's creation. Basically. Two is trying to restructure God's Verse number 13, <clears throat> which was born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now you understand that verse. But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which was born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, but the will of man. Of the will of man, but of God. We understand that we have a Savior that came here to do the will of God. Jesus is our Savior. He was here. He came here to do God's will. He came to do His will. He came to do the will of His Father. Only one time in the life of 33 and a half years of Jesus Christ did He ever call his father is something else. Amen. That is when the relationship between God and his son was broken. It was broken on the cross. There, God looked down, seen your sins and mine on his son, and he couldn't stand to look at it. And Jesus knew and said, This, my God, my God, what hast thou forsaken? Now, Jesus came to do the will of his Father. He came to seek and to save sinners. He came to die so that you could live. But you see, it's all got to be told you, taught you, and explained to you so you understand that the family relationship of God and his family is the same as ours. There's a father, there's a mother, there's the children. And then there's the dog. Max is my dog. Now you keep a dog long enough with you, he'll become part of you. He will think like you. He's sad when we leave. He's happy when we're there. He's scared of the thunder, like we were scared of the thunder. I'm laying in bed, my hands are over the bed. with most Christians, they don't understand the relationship. They don't understand. That's why we believe you cannot lose your salvation because we're born into it. Just like my son can't seek to become my son when he does something wrong because he was born to me. It's a family thing. Jesus says, I've given you eternal life. You've never got eternal life if you could lose it. You've got temporary life. Jesus 
didn't say he gave you eternal life, uh, temporary life. He said, I give you what? Eternal life. How long is eternal? Then he says this, and you shall never perish. Does never still mean never? Does it? They don't understand that. No man is able to pluck you out of my hand. Is no man, no man? You can't get plucked out. Here's you. You're in the hand of Jesus. Then you're in God's hand. And then the Holy Spirit feels you. How you get out of there? You can't get. Isn't that right, Rita? You get that? How you doing? Yeah, I'm talking to you. See, you're my sister. See, the reason I put her on the spot is because she's my sister. Now, McGill, Brother McGill has his son. I have my sister. We're a family. Okay? Now, G Rita is five years, actually not five, actually four years. Four years, one month, younger. I'm her big brother. G Rita, it's easy to know how old Rita is. Rita was born January the 1st, 1950. All you have to do is go 50 plus whatever year. You'll know how old she is. How old are you, Rita? I'm going to say, oh, 50 plus all you. You're 20 on the 50 or 70 years old. You're getting old, sir. I remember when he was born. Do you? It was nasty day. I know, no, no big thing. They came and got you in an ambush. Off you. Now, <clears throat> relationship with God is being neglected by his people. And they don't even think they're doing it. We don't neglect our Creator. If you don't neglect anybody, don't neglect Him. I mean, I don't think you should neglect anybody. But if you're going to choose who to neglect, no, not, not Jesus. Why, why neglect Him? He made you. He gave you everything you got. Look at verse number uh, 13. Or excuse me, verse 14. In verse 14, the key verse here. And the Word was made what? All right, now we know that God is a spirit, then they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and truth. Of that spirit is Father, Son, Holy Ghost, one God, one God, three personalities. Right. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. All evil, co -evil. You, die, you lie to the Holy Spirit, you lie to God. Ask Ananias and Sapphira, they'll tell you. You lie to Jesus, you lie to the Son of God. You lie to the Father, you lie to the Heavenly Father. You don't lie. That's one of the Ten Commandments. Now verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Only one person or one personality of the Trinity was made flesh. Isn't that right? right? Only one personality. Now Jesus, all three were together when they created the earth. Let us create man in our image, referring to the three. Let us go down and confuse our tongues. You see, there was three of them. They worked together. Now in this particular says, the word was made flesh. Who was the word? The word was God. Verse 1. The word was God and the word was was made flesh. Now when he was made flesh, he could do things you couldn't do in the flesh, but he could be tempted. He was tempted of the devil. The Bible said he had the same temptations as everybody else does. I grant you though he did not have a sin nature. Because he was God. He could not sin because he had no sin to sin with. He could have no nature to sin with. He was God. Now he could heal people. Because he was God. He could raise the dead. Because he made people. He was God. He could walk on the water. Because he made the water. He was God. He could conquer the wind. Because he made the wind. He was God. He knows your minds and everything you think. Because he's God. Right. And he was 
made flesh and dwelt among us. Why did he become flesh? And I got clothes. He became flesh because he had to have blood. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness or remission of sin. He had to shed the blood. He had to be born in a fleshly body so he could shed the blood. It's the blood. Tried to kill the whole Jewish race, Esther saved them. Herod tried to kill every baby. God protected him. They tried to beat him to death, stone him to death, throw him off a cliff. God protected him. Why? He had to get to the cross so he could shed the blood. When he shed the blood, he finally said what needed to be said. It is finished. It's all up to you now. I've done what I can do, what I had to do to give you a place called heaven. It's up to you now. As many then as therefore received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So we got to preach that. We got to teach that. And remember that it's not by being a Baptist. It's not by being anything but a Christian. If you're born into the family of God, you become a Christian, and your name is written into the Lamb's Book of Life. And when, God, when the Day of Judgment comes, you're going to want it there. Amen? Father, love you. Thank you for the lesson today. I pray that you'll guide and direct us now in Jesus' name. Bless our Bible. Uh, bless our Bible study tonight and this, and this morning. But more than anything, Lord, help us today as we have a prayer meeting for the next 10 minutes and pray for those who need it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.